Hey there, Wargamers, Justin here, Panther, and today, boom, we're going to work on our Turkina. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. If you are new here, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. Let's funnel all that energy you'd funnel into the enemy mech into helping the channel grow. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Thanks for being an awesome, awesome channel supporter, Sibkin, Lance Mate, Sibco, all those things, any of those things. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting. I appreciate you. For today's video, we're going to be continuing our work on our Turkina. And for that, we are going to be um, working on the remaining details that we want to work on here. So doing some silver work, some black work, um, and doing some of the... Um, the red trim and so forth so forth on this mini uh, just to bring him to life and help him better represent uh, what we want for clan wolf for today that means we're going to be using a few paints so i'm going to go through those and then as we go through the video uh, i'll show them off again so we're going to be using slaughter red magic blue and some speed paint medium we'll also be using vallejo black any kind of black will work but this is what we've got on hand it's what i like i'll be using some burnt red from pro acrylic We'll be using some Necron Compounds and Longbeard Gray from Citadel. This is their dry brush stuff. Assuming these are still good. They might not be. It's been a while since I used them. And then we'll be using a little bit of, um, this is our Rinser Newton Professional Acrylic uh, Titanium White. You could use anything. This is what I like for using for white. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to work on today. And we're going to start out by blacking some areas on here. Ooh, one more thing. I forgot. Uh, we've got some black Templar contrast. We're going to use that too for one step that I forgot. So <laughs> that said, we're going to start out by blacking out some areas on these guns first. So let's go ahead and get our black here on our palette. I've got a little palette off to the side you guys can't see, but that's what I'm using. Nothing fancy, just putting a little bit of black paint on here, and we'll get going. Uh, I've got a little dropper bottle full of water and such. We're going to thin this down just a smidge. Doesn't take too much. And we'll get that rock. All right, so with our black thinned down and ready to roll, we're going to come in here and we're going to black out the areas, uh, well, the whole area for the weapon here. And we're going to be having to do a little bit of touching up afterwards, but once we are done here, what we're doing will make sense. This is going for speed, I'm trying to get this done quickly, get to a good tabletop standard fast. So for that, we'll be uh, cutting some corners, so to speak so that we can get an interesting looking area on our mini without having to work too hard for it. I'm going to flip over here, make sure we get the bottom. Easy to miss. Not the end of the world, but you know, want to make sure we're diligent for what we're hitting. All right, so with that done, I'm just smoothing out here, make sure I didn't leave any thick areas of paint. And we're gonna go ahead and replicate this on this side as well. While our gun barrels here are continuing to dry, we're gonna go ahead and come in with a little bit of that black Templar contrast paint. And we're going to fill in as best we can without messing up um, any of the beige areas in the model here. I'm gonna try and just kind of saturate the rocket pod area. And for that, I've thinned down a little bit of this because I want it to be a little bit more runny. And controllable. I'm just going to come in here and try and fill that in. Basically, want to want to color those rocket tips so that we get some some detail in there. It's a spot that's kind of obvious on the front of the mini, and we don't want it to look like we skipped it. And by putting a little bit of this thin down black Templar contrast paint in here, kind of make it look like a black LRM rack. You could come in here and put um, um, little edge highlights on these missile tubes if you wanted to. Um, and I'm going to sop up a little bit of this. Um, or you could do another coat if you want it darker. Do it to your liking. But I think uh, generally I like to be a little subtle. And uh, I uh, subscribe to the notion that you can always go back and add more paint. You can't go back and add less. So I usually would do, if I'm uh, not exactly sure on the intensity of something I want to do, I'll go a little lighter first. Uh, see if I like it. And if I don't, um, I've not fully committed. And um, I can add more. Or if I do, I can stop there. So... Um, that is something that I like to do when I paint, and maybe it'll, that little idea will help you out as well. And that's kind of what I did here. I wanted this to be subtle, and I knew that if I didn't like it, I could just come back in with a secondary coat anyway and darken that up another shade. 
So you can see how that really makes a massive difference in the way this looks at the front. Um, and now the next thing for us to do is to come in here and target these weapons to make them come to life. Just base black isn't going to do it. So let's go ahead and grab our paints and uh, we'll move on to that spot when these are fully dry. With the guns dry, it's time to come in with our Necron compound. And for that, we're going to be doing a little bit of dry brushing. I'm going to come in here with uh, a little bit of a targeted dry brush um, so that we can kind of hit the... Uh, Whoops, I had a lot of dust on it. Uh, hit the targeted areas that we want without uh, going overboard too much. So we're going to use a dry brush here. I'm going to grab some Necron compound. Now this stuff is already kind of dry. It's um, heavy pigment and thick, so it's different than dry brushing with um, kind of a wet paint. So it comes on kind of thick. So I'm going to work this into our paper towel here and get the excess off and fill in our bristles. You can see it's starting to fade over to the edge. I'll use back of my hand to see how I like it, and that's coming off subtle, so we'll come in here. Now we're going to dry brush over these weapons. And you get this kind of um, dirty, uh, like beaten metal kind of look, right? Which is kind of what we're going for. Um, you could paint these silver, you could. Um, wash them but uh, this is a technique I want to show you because um, you get this brushed metal or dirty metal or a little bit of both look and the thing that's really nice with that is when you're working on areas like joints and stuff that you want to be silver you can black them out dry brush them with black or excuse me with uh, silver and get an interesting kind of beaten scratched kind of metal look uh, worn metal uh, that's really really nice so uh, I like how that's looking. Let's come over and fill our dry brush back up and we'll hit the other one as well. And this is pretty forgiving. Uh, now the reason that we are doing this first um, instead of uh, the next step we're going to do with the black which is going to be dry brushing gray is that we can come in and touch up the black and re-black out what we want and leave the rest silver and then when we dry brush the gray which will be coming up it doesn't show as much on the silver so we can get away with cheating a little bit versus if we did this in reverse order to the black and the gray first um, then we dry brush the silver it hits the black and it ruins it so uh, but that is very easy we get this nice brushed kind of metal look super easy didn't have to work too hard for that so i've let that dry brush uh silver dry a little bit and now i'm coming back in with our black and we're just going to touch up and go into those areas that we don't want silver and we want this kind of frame that these guns are mounted to 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 be blacked out it's kind of what we're going for so let's grab some more of our black paint here and i've pulled out one of my nicer brushes so i can get um a little bit more precision and be more comfortable with what we're doing because i want to minimize any stray brush strokes if i can there we go and we'll come over here and we'll trace out this so essentially we're re-blacking out the whole thing um we're just being careful not to hit the silver and by doing this we could be a little bit more um don't have to be quite as precise as we would have had to have been with the silver. Uh, granted, we are having to come in and, and dance around the silver, but to get that look on the silver, we would have had to have hand painted the silver, washed it, um, hand edge highlighted if you wanted to. And it's like with this, you can just come in and retrace your black, no big deal. Not the end of the world. And you still got that kind of brushed metal look, which I like. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I do that technique a lot on... I uh, used to do a lot on commission stuff for Space Marines. I would actually do it a lot on their bolters, um, their bolt guns. And I would um, dry brush the bulk of it. Um, I'd paint it black, dry brush them silver, and then I'd come in and I'd paint the casing red. So you get this like scratched, brushed metal look on the majority of the gun that's still bordering on black, but not pure black. So you get this like beat up kind of look. And it was really effective and nice uh, and fast. So you could come in and uh, you can spend more time or less time, that's up to you. Um, but personally, if you're not doing crazy high detail work and you're trying to get tabletop or tabletop plus, you can cut some corners. Um, and even on my high detail work, I still often do dry brushing as well. It is a tool for your toolbox. Some people will act like it's um, kind of frowned upon, cheating, lazy, whatever. It's not. Um, and honestly, even if it does, if someone does think it's cheating or lazy, here's the deal. At least at least someone's painting their minis, you know what I mean? Like, um, if that helps you get motivated to paint, 
uh, and you're able to get something that looks good quickly, um, especially if you don't quite enjoy the painting, it helps speed it up. Um, that's a win-win for everyone. So I'm not going to tell someone like, oh, your technique is not good enough. You're cheating. You're doing lazy stuff. Well, you know what? You're painting. And that's good, um, at least for me. Um, I'll generally play with pretty much anyone, but it's really nice to play against fully painted armies with fully painted armies because for me, in my opinion, it helps with immersion. Um, so if for whatever reason you didn't like painting, but you, you found dry brushing really helped get the stuff painted, so um, perhaps you enjoy like seeing fully painted armies on the table too, you just don't like painting, well, maybe the dry brushing helps you get your stuff done, even if you didn't enjoy it completely, but now we're both enjoying an aspect of the game we enjoy together, which is the fully painted force, right? So... That said, one short little ramble down, and we've got those areas re-blacked out. We're going to let that dry, and then we'll come in with some more dry brushing and really bring those to life, too. So for our next step, we're going to be enhancing that black, and for that, we're going to be using some of our Longbeard Gray dry brush compound from GW as well. I'm going to grab one of our dry brushes here, get our paintbrush saturated. Hopefully this isn't too old. This paint here looks looking a little chunky. This might be a dead pot which is unfortunate because it you know I don't go through this stuff very very quickly uh, if it is we'll have a segue and I can I can show you another thing we could do same thing just different paint but we'll see if this is gonna work work it into our oh looks like we're getting some out of there it's so one downside I like the dry brush stuff but it goes like it dries out quick um, and I haven't been using it as often so at the price point it's a little bit annoying um, that it would have dried out on me but um, you know I'm gonna put just a little little dab of water in there Maybe that'll help hydrate this a little bit kind of the opposite of what we're going for for dry brushing right but if it helps us get some of this color we're good to go oh there we go we got a nice little chunk all right all right I think that little bit of water helped yeah there we go look at that better all right so let's come over here to a clean spot so you guys can see okay so we're gonna work some of that into the bristles and out there we go I think we're getting more subtle gray there try the back of our hand here first so now I'm gonna hold it in this direction and I'm gonna try and pull this way so we get the gray focused on the outer edge uh, so we can kind of cheat some edge highlights may have uh, <laughs> jammed up our bristles there a little bit uh, getting our um, dry brush uh, compound out of there You can see what I'm talking about where if we had done this in reverse, that silver would have really just messed up the, the edge highlights were essentially, or dry brushing highlights, which look kind of like edge highlights that we're getting here. And this is real easy, going real, uh, real slow and just building it up until I'm happy. And I'm going to kind of like do a little brushing right here on the edge so we leave a little bit of gray on the top of the cylinder there, like that. Let's get that little, little kind of highlight we're working on. And now this is um, not necessarily... Um, real edge highlights but I find that sometimes um, putting a little bit extra on these in areas that don't quite make sense just makes the model look a little bit better because this is tabletop wargaming not realism so I'll hit stuff like this and just wipe that off a little bit Hit a little bit too much there and we're going to come here uh, so anyway as I was saying um, I'll get some highlights in areas that don't necessarily make sense just because it looks a little bit better on the tabletop and I'll do that again over here same kind of thing and this is real easy you can do this and like it's fast this is very fast and now I'm playing to the strengths of the mini as well so I'm trying to pull into uh, the edges to really help pull that in but you could do this on anything just your um, your gray is not going to be as crisp as a highlight would be but if you're trying to, to save some time this is a way to do it and you can see on that cylinder right there it's gray uh, but it's not like gray lines because it's rounded so anything with a hard harsh edge you can get some nice lines on but these cylinders are just going to have a little hint of gray on it. But that's okay. Still fast, reasonably efficient for the time invested. And you can see if we had done that in reverse, we would have been getting silver all over that black and it just would not have looked very good. So one of the things we can do to bring out um, or bring some delineation between the colors here is we can come in with a little bit of that contrast black and tidy up a few areas. The area between the uh the kind of black border and the the weapons just come in with a little bit of our contrast paint here and just get us a little separation like that do the same thing on this side a 
And I'm going to actually black out the tips while we're here. So that'll be useful for a future step. Okay. And we'll come in over here and do the same thing. Burp, burp. Burp, burp. There we go. So super easy. And uh, yeah, so we're coming right along here with this mini. That's going to bring us up to the next step, but I need these to dry. And we're going to work on uh, doing some of the little um, uh, kind of laser detail works. Um, so these look like they've got like a PPC or something that's bright inside of them. Next up, we've got our white prepped. Now the black areas in our barrels are dry. And we're going to come in with a little bit of this white paint. And we're going to do our best to fill in some of these spots without damaging uh, or, or bleeding into the other areas. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to try and put kind of a dab of white into the center of the barrel here. Okay. Trying to leave some of that black ring around it if I can. This is a little bit more difficult to do. Um, so it may take a little practice. You may want to pull out one of your nicer brushes to do this. And it will be easier on some models more so than others. Yeah, and see, I've gotten a rye there hitting the bottom edge, which is not what I wanted to do. So while it's still wet, I'm going to come in here and try and tidy that edge up a little bit. So we're just trying to get that white paint off the edge because we don't want that. We want it centralized in the center because by having the dark spots next to it, it's going to make that, ah, that white look even brighter. Okay, I think we got that reasonable as best as we're going to probably get it. So let's come back in and I'm going to try and fix the side here. There we go. Okay, I think that is reasonable. Now we'll come in over here, do the same thing. All right, so we got white down in the tips of those. Now we're going to come in and dab some white into the uh, kind of sensors next to our LRMs here. That one should be a little easier. These aren't quite as deep of a recess as the uh, barrels were. Of course, I say that and I got a little bit off kilter there. It's also a little, <laughs> a little bit more difficult to uh, target these areas while uh, trying to keep a microphone in front of my face and keep this under the camera. So for you at home, this might be a little easier because you'll be, won't have the same constraints, but if you mess up, just tidy it up while it's still wet. And so it's able to come in and sop up the areas on the edge that I wasn't happy with. I'm going to come back and uh, dab that one more time because it looks a little bit anemic for what I wanted. So we'll come in over here. And we had another little slight stray stroke here, so we'll just sop that up. Okay. Now we'll come back in. I'm going to touch that other one up real quickly. Okay. And we'll give that one one more little dab. And, of course, <laughs> the same problem has persisted on both sides every time so we'll clean that up all right so now to our final step with the white here um well kind of two steps so we'll get into that in just a second though uh, we're going to grab a little bit more of the white off our palette and now we're kind of trying to do um, a little bit of a crescent on the bottom edge here that's because we want to kind of give the illusion of like a reflection and this will all make sense in a moment when we get to the next step here. There we go. And that looks looks good. I think we might come back for another coat in a second. Just really want to make sure it's nice and bright and white and vibrant. And we'll do the same thing up here. This one's going to be a little more tricky.
There we go. All right, so I'm going to come in and uh, we're going to hit this bottom edge one more time just to really make sure it's brightened up. Which I'm liking that. Okay. And while we're here, uh, we're going to let those dry, but we're going to prep a spot that won't be used in today's video, uh, but it will be in a future one. And we might as well just go ahead and white it out while we're here. And for that, we're going to white out the kind of canopy area so that it's prepped for when we get to the canopy um, jeweling video. That'll be probably the last video we do on this guy. Um, it's usually the thing I leave for last because it's uh, kind of my reward for completing the mini because it's it's like such a focal part of the work that you're doing. Everyone kind of looks at the, the cockpit, so I usually do it last because it makes me feel good knowing that it's the the final step, the, the cherry on top, so to speak. So going ahead and getting that whited out. And I thought that, I thought this area down in here was its um, canopy and then I saw one painted online and they had done these spots that I'm whiting out here and I was like, maybe I missed, maybe I didn't know, maybe I was looking at the wrong spots for the Turquina and these spots are definitely doable. So I was concerned we weren't gonna get any jeweling on here but I think, I think we're saved here. With our white areas now dry, I've gone ahead and got a little bit of our magic blue and our slaughter red thinned down. Just using these little water lids for it. I save those. If you drink water bottles, save these. It's a good way to get something useful for your hobby and sort of recycle something that's going to go in the trash. So we're going to grab some of this red and we're going to basically go over the uh, little targeting areas right here that are with our LRMs. And we are going to cover some of his uh, um, beige with it because this is meant to look kind of like that's lit up, like it's targeting something or it's glowing. And this is going to go on, like I've got it thinned down pretty good so you can come back in and sop up a little bit with your paintbrush until you're happy. And I'm going to try and hit the whole ring here because I did so on the other one so I really want to make sure it matches. And my paintbrush is clean here. I'm just going to kind of tidy up the edge just a little. Okay. So I think that looks pretty cool. And now we're going to come in, cleaning our brush out, and grab some of this blue. And we're going to do the same thing down here. And you can see why we filled the inside with the white, because we want that blue to pick up the center. And where the areas that were left black are just going to look like a really dark blue. And that helps us create the illusion that there's kind of a hot barrel in there. Now, this is a really good example uh, model to work on because it's got a nice area in there. Some of the other ones are a lot more difficult and you may end up having to come back in and um, like dab white in there to make it work. Um, but this one's a pretty good one because its barrels are deep and have some details in there you can, you can reach. So I'm going to tidy up the edge here. I've cleaned up my paintbrush and just... With it slightly moist, I'm kind of just feathering the top a little. Just clean it up. And then I'm not sure if this is supposed to be auto cannons or not. We're just going to make a match. Um, someone in the comments right now is going, because I'm screwing up their mini um, or, or, or their, their favorite uh, model, their Tequina. Uh, but, you know, noobs go and do what noobs do. And I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure there's a variant that could take four PPCs or two PPCs and two um, lasers of some sort or insert whatever. Uh, but for the sake of doing a tutorial, just showing you guys more of the same thing so you can kind of see it in action, makes sense. Now, I'm dragging on the side of my thumb here to de or get some of the paint out of the brush so I can come in and quickly sop this up um, while it's going. And yeah, once that's dry, we've got our barrel tips, and uh, that was that was pretty painless and easy, right? Now you could come back in, we are not, but I will tell you, you could come back in when this dries and you could have some thin down white and really enhance the edges or the tips uh, if you're comfortable getting in there. We're not going to do that today. It's a little more difficult for me to do on camera because uh, I really want to get it like up in my face. Um, but if you did that, you'd go on the same areas that we did uh, initially. So the center and the bottom edge, you know, because like if you do the whole ring, it's fine. But if you do an edge, it really gives the illusion that it's like reflecting the light coming out. Uh, that's what I like to do. Uh, but you'd put a little bit there and leave some of that blue showing. You just have a little hint of white and that would give you a much more brighter spot. So if you want to do that, you can. Same thing on the red, little ring down there, little dot. Um, and that'll do you just fine. So now the next step that we're going to do 
to finish up with the detail work on this guy is to come in and do some red freehand lines on the beige that's really going to bring our beta galaxy to life. For the red freehand, we're going to be using Burnt Red from Pro Acrylic. I really like it. I also like their Bold Pyrrole Red, but it's a little bit bright for this application, I think. On camera here, it's looking a little bit more orange. In real life, it's, it's much more of a bright red, uh, but I like this color with the beige better. Now, for this application, I'm also using a little bit of this. Um, Yosanja, or Yosanja, Josanja, I'm not sure if it's Spanish or not, um, but I'm using this stuff, Magic Mix, it's really nice for uh, kind of glazing and thinning the stuff down, and I mix a little bit with water, uh, so you'll see me using that. I've also got our red paint on a palette here. Um, you could use a wet palette, but um, unless I'm doing like crazy detail work on like a bust, I usually just use one of these. So... Uh, so I've got my brush loaded up with paint, and I'm going to grab some of this um, mixing stuff and just mix it in a little bit on the edge with uh, some of our red paint here. So like right here, I've just mixed some right on the edge until I'm happy with kind of what I've got, consistency. And then I'm pulling the brush on the edge here because there's a little bit of a lip and just pulling it. It looks like it's a little thin, so bring in some more paint in. I'm also twirling the brush a little bit as I do this because I'm getting uh, the brush kind of loaded with paint as well. And I think we're probably in a pretty good spot. So I'll move that off the screen. And again, I'll usually kind of test in the back of my hand. It also lets me pull um, pull a tip here. So now we've got to figure out where we want our edges to be. Um, I think one right here on his, um, uh, his weapon is going to be good. So I'm just going to come in and very carefully just pull a straight line. Now these aren't going to be perfect. Just do the best you can. And I am not a pro at this. Um, doing straight lines uh, is oddly with a paintbrush can be very difficult. So we're just going to do the best we can. And you'll notice one of the things I, I've done is I've got, uh, I obviously have this in a mini grip. And I've got multiple points of contact. So let me pull this line and I will explain what I'm doing. And you'll see here, I'll talk about multiple points of contact. The first thing I did when I rotated here, instinctively put my pinky down. And that one spot right there didn't look perfect, so we're just going to tidy that up. Okay. So, not perfect, but I like that line the way it is. Now, when I say multiple points of contact, you'll see me, I'm gripping here, get a really good grip. And then I've got, like, my pinky to brace, and then I'm moving these fingers. And I also have, like, my thumb down here. I'm bracing this knuckle on that thumb. So I'm minimizing the chance for me to sway. If you were just freehanding with your hand out in the air, which some people can, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, as you breathe, you get sway. So I'm going to use two examples uh, to drive this point home. If you are familiar with photography or with um, um, marksmanship with a gun, um, this holds true. So if you are taking a photo, right, and you have a, uh, a very like slow shutter speed or a, a high exposure time, if you brace and you snap that photo and you move, you're going to get blur, right? Because you moved while you were needing to be perfectly still to do what you needed to do. So what do you do to help with that? You get a bipod. You get a, um, a tripod, you know, you get multiple points of contact, whatever. The more points of contact you have with a stable surface, the less likely you are to get any movement. The same thing with like a rifle. If you want to uh, take a, a long range shot, like a sniper shot, right? And you're standing up and you're holding the weight of the rifle, little small amounts of movement, your breathing, uh, the swing, your, your arm strain, it's going to cause your barrel to shift and move and your point of impact may not be what you want. So you can get a bipod, a tripod, a, a braced position. The more points of contact you can get, think like if you're laying prone on the ground with your rifle. Um, you've gone flat, there's minimal opportunities for you to sway and move and mess up your shot. Your shot right it's the same thing here the more points of contact you get the more braced you can get the less potential sway there will be with your brush so i like to give those examples because uh, they help me and they might help you um, and i like to get the photography one and the rifle one because for some people it resonates differently and it makes more sense if you're if you're into photography you'll get it if you're into guns you'll get it if you're not into um you're into one but not the other hopefully one of those examples will help you so um, now for the rest of our freehand, we're just going to be kind of looking for areas that we want to hit. And usually with this, I try and do uh, mirror it on both sides. So we'll come in here. And this is one of those, it might almost be better to have a, a test mini to practice on first. Because once I get going, I get more comfortable. And I feel like that this line, uh, at least the, the first one on this arm, was already better than the first one on the other one. 
it's a little bit more crisp, you know, so just got to get comfortable and practice. And honestly, if you, if this isn't perfect, don't worry about it. And the thing that I always tell myself that helps when I'm working on this stuff is what, what if, what if the mech tech or whoever's preparing this guy for battle, you know, are they perfect? Are they masking us off? Are they getting into battle quick? Is everything in for military iconography perfect? Like when you get up on it, I feel like there's um, slight mistakes or there's weathering or chips or it's been repainted a billion times. And this is a military, um, you know, weapon of war in the tabletop. So while they might want to make sure it's functional, you know, its paint scheme might be changed often from, especially if this is like the parade color scheme or something for Beta Galaxy, but they, they maybe they change their paint scheme to be more camo pattern to tailor for what planet they're on. You know, so these things might get painted over and over. If these lines aren't perfect, don't stress. It is not the end of the world. It happens. So we're going to come over here. And as Bob Ross would say, we don't make mistakes. We have happy little accidents. If you, uh, if you mess up a spot, just try your best to fix it. That's all you can do. I can tell you what I would recommend is don't let fear dictate what you do in life. Because if you want to try this and you don't, um, you're never going to get good at it if you don't try it and practice it. And if you let fear win, well, you've actually lost because you're not actually getting more proficient with a thing you actually want to do. So if you want to succeed, you have to risk failure. And then if you fail at that point, you're not actually failing. You're learning something. So you try to be better on the next one and better on the next one and better on the next one. No one who's good at a thing ever got it right the first time every time. The, the people that are the best at stuff in life are the ones who keep trying, keep practicing. And the people that you might look up to who are really good, they really excel at something, even if they have natural talent, they probably work very hard to maintain it or um, you know hone it. So it, wherever you are in your painting journey doesn't much matter. If you are interested and dedicated to trying to forge your craft, that's what matters. And then maybe maybe you think I'm better than you are at this point. But I'll tell you, um, you, you could be better than what I'm doing. Like this or the detailed stuff you might see from me on Instagram, 100% you could do it. Don't, don't compare yourself to someone else and let that um, stop you from making forward progress. And I'll give you an example. There's a guy I follow on Instagram, uh, Gavin Paints Minis. He used to be in my Twitch live streams. Um, the guy has been painting a fraction as long as I have, and he has eclipsed me. He now works as an heavy metal painter for Games Workshop. They actually gave him a job and f uh, moved him over to, I think it's Nottingham. Um, and that guy started, uh, I started seeing him on Twitch, and he was in my streams. I have a mini he actually painted for me from back then, and it's fantastic. And I look up to him, and he was in my stream, right? Um, so even the people you may think are really good, they probably follow someone themselves that they, that they look up to and they aspire to learn from and emulate. So that is the way it is. And I, I would imagine that even your Anne Hills Geraldes and your Sam Lenses of the world, they probably have artists that they also like to follow. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. I doubt he's watching me on YouTube, but I was standing at Nova last year and this guy's entering his piece and he actually is the guy who won like the overall at um, Nova Open last year for the, the painted mini or painted bust. And uh, he goes, you're Justin, the arm painter. And I was like, yeah. And he told me who he was. And I was following him, but I didn't know who he was. He's, he's far better than me. But the guy follows me on Instagram, and he knew exactly who I was. And I thought that was awesome, right? And I think that you might be surprised how many of the award-winning artists still follow people, still get inspiration from people. Um, or it might also be like it is for me when I'm trying to help someone learn to paint. It's um, not only is it cathartic, um, it's also vicarious. Uh, it's been so long since I was new to painting that I don't, I can't remember it. I can't grasp that feeling anymore, you know? And for a moment, a brief moment, if I'm teaching someone, I get to vicariously live through you and uh, enjoy that feeling of newness just a little bit uh, while you do. And I think that is very cool. It's also why I love when people share on Instagram, share with what, me what they're working on, tag me and whatnot, because like, I want to see what you're doing and I want to enjoy that alongside you. And uh, I'm on a little bit of a ramble here. It's what I do because um, I'm just kind of doing the same thing over and over. And hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Or at the very least, if you are watching while you're working on – or listening while you're working on stuff, it's not just silence while I'm sitting here pulling lines. But I think I think if I was if I was getting back into painting – or not back into painting. If I, was, if I was just now starting the hobby, there's no better time – like we've never lived in such a time um, like like we are in now for getting content creators and connecting with people and learning to to do hobby stuff. Like it's so fantastic. Um, so I think uh, listening to someone in the background on painting would help motivate me. And I used to watch um, a lot of battle reports and some tutorials back in the day. But 
having something I feel like a little bit more freeform where they're actually kind of just rambling a little bit in the background. Almost Bob Rossi is, is cool. So I hope that philosophy, that that um, approach is good for you guys. And if it isn't, you know, you can always fast forward and see what you needed to see, right? But I do think we are rapidly approaching the end point for our edge, high, or edge lights, our um, freehand on this guy. Uh, and I'm just kind of winging it. I'm just painting stuff that, for me, looks cool, right? And I thought that these areas that I was doing, they looked cool. And they seemed like spots that were natural to have that kind of red pattern, right? And I kind of didn't like this line so much, so I'm going to come back in and just do another one over the top and just try and clean that up a little. Yeah. And I feel like we need one, I feel like we need one on the top of this fella here, on the, the, the disc, as it were, the, the top of his Enterprise-like dome on this Mini. So we're going to try our best to trace this line here and try not to get too heavy with it. There we go. I like that. I think that looks great. And the, these little red lines, like, they're subtle, but once you get them going, they really do, like, they really, they complement the, the uh, Beta Galaxy paint scheme so well. And I had a little bit of a rough brush stroke right there, but as I said before, happy little accidents. We'll just tidy this up as best we can. And I kind of like this side where it got a little thicker, so we'll just trace a little bit more. And over the top. Okay. And I didn't quite get all the way back uh, on this one, uh, right up to the rocket pods. So we're going to try and get kind of right up in here. There we go. So I like that. I think we're going to do uh, one more. And we'll... We'll pop one right here. And I think that'll do it. I like that. I think this looks cool. I think we, with just a little bit of effort, we have really bring, brought this guy to life. And the things that we have left to do are to do the basing and the canopy. And I think this guy is going to be ready for the tabletop. That said, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please sign up in the comments below. If you have not already, make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, keep rolling your dice, keep painting your minis, and I will catch you guys next time. If you guys are still sitting here watching this, let's take a moment to uh, put a pop up here to showcase those wonderful Patreon supporters here. We'll let that scroll here. And uh, thank you so much for supporting what I do. That's super awesome. I really do appreciate that.